Hat, check. Sunglasses, check. Notes, check. Pepsi, check. Sources, check. Big skin, check. Oh, and one more thing. 10,000 subscribers, check. Let's go. Hey, welcome back to Golden Blue Dude with your humble host, Golden Blue Dude. And if you're a diehard college football fan, this is the place for you. Go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button because that's all we do here. Quick reminder, I do now have a P.O. box so you can send me stuff to display on my back wall. So represent your team and send your gear to P.O. Box 360, Liberty, South Carolina 29657. Yep. Once again, I'm having another busy day today, so we're gonna have to do another car video, which I haven't been doing a lot of them here recently, so it's it's okay, it's okay. Yesterday's turned out pretty good. Hopefully today's turns out pretty good as well. Today I'm talking about the Pac-12, and, and the Pac-12 is in, in bad shape. It, it's not looking like it's gonna last very much longer. Well, at least the Pac-12, as we know it, is not gonna last very much longer. Brett McMurphy left nothing to the imagination. We already know that the Big Ten has gotten USC and UCLA, and it looks like they're going after Washington. Washington and Oregon as well. Oregon had some representatives in Chicago to talk about the compatibility of Oregon. And most people think that it's just a matter of time before Oregon and Washington also join the Big Ten. The only difference is they'll probably join the Big Ten getting partial revenue share. They're not going to get the full share because they don't bring in enough money. And that's not disrespect to Oregon and Washington. You bring in a lot of money, you just don't meet the threshold to get the full share. You'll still get your 60 or 70 million when the others are getting 100 million. That's still a lot of money and you survive. You'll be included in the Big Ten. The Big Ten has already got USC, UCLA. They're expected to get Oregon and Washington. And now a lot of people are saying that they're going to get Miami and Florida State as well from the ACC. Once again, Grand Rice got to get figured out. Miami and Florida State are actively seeking AAU status and it's being reported that they're very, very close. So that shows me that, that they're going for the Big Ten. And that would be a big swing and a miss for the SEC. Remember, they left out Miami on their first four in from the ACC. That could cost them Florida State. And, and that's a big blow as far as a revenue maker and another big brand in the state of Florida. So all you fans in the SEC, you might have Florida to thank for that. And also, most people think that Colorado, Arizona, Arizona State, and Utah will be headed to the Big 12. It's basically going to be their lifeline, and they're going to take it. They're going to be able to make more money in the Big 12 than if they stay in the Pac-12, and there's no guarantee that the Pac-12 is actually going to survive. So those four teams are going to jump to the Big 12. I already did a video on the phases. It looks like Colorado and Arizona will be in Phase 1, and then Utah and Arizona State plus San Diego State are going to be in Phase 2. And then there's a bunch of other unnamed teams that could be a part of Phase 3. A lot of people are thinking that that's going to be some ACC teams if that grant of rights gets figured out. Now, after all this happens, the Pac-12, they're, they're going to have some decisions to make because you're still going to have Cal, Stanford, Oregon State, and Washington State. And this is assuming that Stanford doesn't go independent, and it's also assuming that the Big Ten doesn't grab Notre Dame with Stanford. So there's still a possibility that Stanford might not be in the Pac-12 when all is said and done. But for the purposes of this video, I'm including Stanford. I'm going to say that they stay. So the four teams remaining, Cal, Stanford, Oregon State, and Washington State, what are their options? going to be. Well, the first option is a straight merger with the Mountain West. That's not a bad option as long as the Pac-12 can keep its status as a Power 5 conference and just add the Mountain West and it stays the Pac-12. I think that I think that's a pretty good option. Maybe the best option on the board. But how much money can they get? I don't know. That, that's the biggest question. I'm not sure. I don't even think they can get as much money as they're getting right now, which is the worst TV contract out of all the Power 5 conferences. Yeah, it's going to be worse than the worst. But besides merging straight up with the Mountain West, the Pac-12 could actually just pick and choose some teams out of the Mountain West. What teams would they pick up from the Mountain West? Well, here are the teams that I think they should pick. Now remember, San Diego State is off the board because it's rumored that the Big 12 is actually going after San Diego State. And going by the amount of money that they would make, San Diego State would choose the Big 12 over the Pac-12. So they're off the board. The first name is Air Force. Yes, I think the Pac-12 should get Air Force if this is an option. Air Force is a service academy. They're one of the highest revenue makers in the Mountain West, and they have good academics. What about Boise State? Yes, I think they should bring in Boise State. Now, Boise State's academics not all that great, and that's what's kept them out of the Pac-12, but they're going to make money for the Pac-12, so you need to bring in Boise State. Colorado State. I think Colorado State would be a great pickup for the Pac-12 if they lose Colorado. Hey, at least you're keeping a footprint in the state of Colorado. And Colorado State does have decent academics. I would say a flat no to New Mexico. I don't think they bring anything to the table. No offense to my New Mexico subscribers. I know there's a few of you out there. There's Utah State. I think they should bring in Utah State. I mean, you're losing Utah, so at least it keeps a footprint in the state of Utah. And Utah State's one of the bigger brands in the Mountain West. I went back and forth on 
on Wyoming. But looking at the choices on the board, I would say you'd have to take Wyoming. Not a tremendous brand, probably lower on the list. But if the Pac-12 wants to stay at 12 teams, they might have to pick up Wyoming. Then there's Fresno State. Fresno State is a must. You absolutely have to get Fresno State. They are arguably the biggest brand in the Mountain West. They have good academics. You have to get Fresno State. Then there's Hawaii. I would say no. Just the traveling alone eliminates them. And if this scenario were to happen, Hawaii might be flat out screwed because nobody's going to pick them up. What about Nevada? I would say yes to Nevada. Their brand is decent. That's a nice footprint in the state of Nevada and they have they have decent academics. Of course, San Diego State already off the board. What about San Jose State? No, I don't think they bring enough to the table. I think Fresno State is good enough for the footprint in the state of California as far as adding from the Mountain West. So I would say a hard pass on San Jose State, especially not getting San Diego State. And then finally, UNLV. I went back and forth on this one as well. I, I guess you can pick up UNLV. They have the potential of being a good brand, but that fan base has got to get behind UNLV to make it a more valuable brand. So the Pac-12 would look like this after picking up those teams, assuming that Stanford stays in the Pac-12. You'd have Cal, Stanford, Oregon State, Washington State, Air Force, Boise State, Colorado State, Utah State, Wyoming, Fresno State, Nevada, and UNLV. Certainly not the Pac-12 that we're used to. Doesn't look great, but it's better than some of the alternatives. Now I want to do the season predictions for the four remaining teams in the Pac-12. Cal, Stanford, Oregon State, and Washington State. First, we'll start with Cal. You know, I think Cal could have a better team than what they had last year, but the schedule's going to be a little bit more difficult, and a lot of the teams that they play are going to be a lot better this year. So brace yourself, Cal fans. First, you have FCS UC Davis. That's going to be a win. Then you get lowly UNLV at home. That's going to be a win. At number five, Notre Dame. I think you get obliterated. You get Arizona at home. I have this as a 50-50 loss. It wouldn't totally surprise me if Cal won this game, but I think Arizona's going to be a much better team. Then you go on the road to Washington State. I think that's a solid loss. Next up is on the road to Colorado. I have this as a 50-50 loss, but it wouldn't totally shock me if Cal won this game. You get Washington at home. I have that as a 50-50 loss, but Cal could pull off an upset right there. Then you get number 11, Oregon at home. I have that as a solid loss. Then on the road to number 14, USC. Once again, a solid loss. You stay on the road to Oregon State. Another solid loss. Then you come back home to Stanford. That's a 50-50 win, but be careful. Stanford could beat you. And then finally, you see UCLA at home, I also have this as a 50-50 win. Cal and UCLA are bigger rivals than people realize, and I think Cal just catches UCLA napping. So I have Cal finish the season a lowly 4-8. That's not good at all. All right, time for Stanford. I think Stanford's going to be about as good as what they were last year. Here's a look at their schedule. First, they get FCS Colgate. Obviously, that's a win. The number 14 USC. I had this as a 50-50 loss, but it wouldn't surprise me if Stanford won. They're pretty good at playing their rivals. Then on the road to Washington, and I have this as a solid loss. On the road to number 11, Oregon, I also have that as a solid loss. They come back home to Oregon State. I have that as a 50-50 win, but it wouldn't surprise me if they won that game. On the road to number 5, Notre Dame, solid loss. And they get Arizona State at home. Arizona State's going to take a massive step backwards. That's a solid win. On the road to UCLA, I have that as a 50-50 loss. You come back home to Washington State, I have that as a loss. On the road to number 7, Utah, that's going to be a blowout loss. Then on the road to Cal, that's a 50-50 loss, but it wouldn't surprise me if Stanford won that game. And then finally back home to number 25, BYU. I also have that as a loss. So I also have Stanford going 4-8. and eight. I wish I had better news for you, Stanford, but I, I just don't see you getting to a bowl this year. Next up is Oregon State. I think Oregon State's going to be a good team this year. They were decent last year. They're going to be even better this year. Let's take a look at their schedule. First, they get Boise State. I have this as a 50-50 win. If this was on the road, I'd probably have it as a 50-50 loss. After that, on the road to Fresno State. Speaking of which, I do have that as a 50-50 50 loss. Then you get FCS Montana State. That's an easy win. Then you get number 14 USC. And I have Oregon State upsetting USC. So that's a 50-50 win. Then on the road to number 7 Utah. And I have them upsetting Utah as well. That's a 50-50 win. After that this is going to sound crazy after those two upsets. But I think this is a trap game. On the road to Stanford I have it as a 50-50 loss. After that you come back home to Washington State. I have that as a 50-50 win. Then Colorado. That should be an easy win. On the road to Washington I think the Huskies beat you on the road. Then you come back home to Cal. I think that's a win. On the road to Arizona State, they're going to be bad. That's a win. And then finally, number 11, Oregon. I have that as a 50-50 win. Not so much as an upset because I think Oregon does have a down year this year. So I have Oregon.
Oregon State going 9-3. and three. That's a good season, and I think Oregon State's going to be a good team this year. Now, maybe I'm a little bit off on the wins and losses. Maybe they're more like an 8-4, and four, but they're going to be a good team this year. And finally, Washington State. I also think Washington State takes a slight step forward this year. They're going to be a good team. Here's a look at their schedule. First, they get FCS Idaho. That's a win. Then at number 18, Wisconsin. That's a tough out-of-conference game. That's going to be a loss. Then you get Colorado State at home. That should be an easy win. Then you get number 11, Oregon. I also have that as a 50-50 win. Once again, I think Oregon has a letdown year this year, and I think Washington State upsets them. After that, you get Cal. I have that as a win. Then on the road to number 14, USC. I think the Trojans beat you at home. Then on the road to Oregon State, I have that as a 50-50 loss. You come back home to number 7, Utah. Upset win. I have that as a 50-50 win. On the road to Stanford, once again, I know this doesn't make sense, but I have this as a 50-50 loss. I think it's a trap game. After that, you get Arizona State at home. They're going to be terrible. That's going to be a win. On the road to Arizona, I also have that as a win, but that also could be a trap game because I think Arizona is going to be much better than what they were last year, but I'm going to stick with the win right there. And then finally, Washington at home. I have that as a 50-50 win. So I have Washington State going 8-4, and four, getting to a decent ball. So I expect Oregon State and Washington State to have pretty good seasons this year. McCall and Stanford, better luck next year because this year is going to be a nightmare. Y'all let me know in the comments section what you think is going to happen to the Pac-12, and also let me know what you think about my predictions on Cal, Stanford, Oregon State, and Washington State. That's all I got for you for this show. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you on my next show.